Hey guys, today I'm gonna to run you through my current home assistant setup. I'm gonna share the theme I'm running, the custom dashboards I've created, and the home automation that I have set up. Now, home assistant is a huge rabbit hole. I have time boxed this to a couple of hours, but be warned, you could easily spend days configuring your ideal setup. This is my default view, which is a bit messy. It's just a dump of everything that I'm monitoring. Straight away, you can see it looks different from last time. We are using a custom theme. I've currently got three custom dashboards set up. We have server health. This monitors the health of my Raspberry Pi, which is running my media server, home assistant, and a bunch of extra things on it. It's got your standard memory, CPU, and disk usage, as well as a temperature measure and a speed test as well. The next dashboard I have is for my home office, and essentially it's just a button that allows me to turn on and off all of my lights. If I click the button, every light turns off, and if I click the button again, every light turns on. I love that, it makes life easy because I am running Wiz, Nanoleaf, and LifeX, which are three separate companies, which means three separate apps to control my lights, whereas I can click one button and have it all done within Home Assistant. And finally, we have my commute dashboard. This is a work in progress. Like I said earlier, I had time boxed everything to a couple of hours. I didn't want to sink days worth of effort into actually building this out properly. Now, if you guys are interested in this, let me know in the comments down below and I will dedicate more time into it. But the idea was to integrate into the train line, the traffic system, and to get notifications of how long it would take to get from my house to the train station, what the train line looks like, what is the status, are there any interruptions, and essentially how long will it take me to get to work. And that was the idea behind the dashboard. And the final thing we'd set up is home automations. So if we head over to settings, automations, we have a lights off and a lights on automation. Essentially, what it will do is when it's five o'clock in the morning, when I generally get up, I want to do these set of actions, which is turn on all of the lights in my office and the lights off is the same, but at nine o'clock at night when I go to sleep, I wanna turn them all off. What I'm gonna do in the future as well is add a third one where instead of turning the lights off, it will dim them. So you can actually dim all of your lights instead of just an on and off. So how do we do this? Well, let's start with our themes. The first thing we want to do is install hacks. There is a complete guide on their website. Essentially, you wanna to go to container and copy this command. I'm gonna quickly log into Portana. Now I'm using Portana to manage my containers and I'm going to go into my Home Assistant container and open up a shell terminal. We're gonna go ahead and paste that command in. <clears throat> now you can also go ahead and chuck this into your Docker Compose file. In case you ever need to terminate or start up a completely fresh container, it'll have these changes in. We're gonna go back to Home Assistant, click on Developer Tools, and we are going to restart Home Assistant. Click on Restart. Once that's finished rebooting, we're gonna run through the initial configuration setup. So we're gonna go ahead, go to Settings, and look for Devices and Services. And we wanna click Add Integration and search for Hacks. Click on that one. Click on all of these. Uh, I don't know if I want experimental features. All right, so we have to give authorization to GitHub, so I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and run through that process. Continue. Okay, so we're just giving it public read-only access. That is fine. And then finally, click on Finish. You'll now see hacks on the left-hand side of the screen. If we click into it, we can now see that we have custom integrations and front-end. So for themes, we're gonna go with front-end. We're gonna click on the plus button down the bottom and we're gonna search for soft. This, cool. This is the theme that I am actually using at the moment. So we're gonna click download. This is gonna go ahead and download a file and place it within your themes soft folder. So it's got that YAML file there. And 
I'm just going to I'm just going to go ahead and download another custom theme as well. Now, if you click on your name down the bottom, you should see a drop down list of themes that you can choose from. This is the default Home Assistant one. Let's have a look at all of the other ones that we can choose from. <clears throat> so if I go dark, dashboards, it's as easy as that. The one I'm currently using is soft UI, which I really like because it gives a nice little glow or elevation around your cards and I think it just looks really good. So that's themes. Now let me show you how I set up this custom dashboard that reports on the health of our server. The first thing you want to do is head to settings and devices and services. Integrations are essentially what custom things can you integrate with. So for our dashboards, on one of them we know we want the weather. For this specific one that we're building out now, we know that we want a speed test and we also know we want the memory, CPU and RAM usage of our actual server. It's as simple as clicking add integration and searching for what you want. So for the weather, you can simply click any weather one that you want. This is the one I'm currently using for weather. For speed test, I'm using speedtest.net. Simply click it and it'll add it to your list of integrations. And finally, for the CPU, RAM and memory usage, it's slightly different. We have to go into our code. On our server running Home Assistant, you will have a configuration.yaml file. And in here, you want to copy and paste this section. I'm going to leave a link to my config in a public git repo down below so that you can simply copy and paste. Now, once you've done that, restart your Home Assistant and you then should be able to start building out your custom dashboard. And we do that by heading over to settings, dashboards, and click add new dashboard. <clears throat> Give it a name and select an icon and click create. We'll go ahead and click this button in the top right hand corner and edit dashboard. We're going to start with an empty dashboard and click take control. Now we can start adding things to it. We've got a range of different things that we can choose from. I'm going to start with a couple of gauges. So within here, you can select the entity. We're going to go with disk usage. Hit save. And we're going to do another one. This time we want memory. Let's go memory use percent. Uh, again, what else did we have? We had disk memory. Then we're going to do processor usage. And finally, we're going to do another one for uh, temperature. So we can see the temp. Now that's all well and good. I think we want to do a couple of graphs as well. So we're going to scroll down to this area. And in here, we're going to do again the same thing. So we want temperature. And you can give these custom names as well. Sometimes it's nice to have both. I just like having the graphical interface of seeing it over time. With all of these, what's really nice is you can click into them and see all the historical stats as well. Next, we're gonna do this one, but we are going to do a speed test. We're gonna do download, hit save. Do the same for upload. And again, the same for ping. Hit done. And that's how you can build out your custom dashboard. It's as simple as making sure that you have your integrations in place first, and then you simply add it to your dashboard through the use of different cards. Now to do something like my dashboard with my home office, again, it's exactly the same where you click on add a card. For this one, you can click on entities and you can add multiple different things. So we've got our LifeX pegboard, we've got our NanoLeaf, and the next one is we want Wiz. W-I-Z, hit save, 
kit done and now you've got a panel that at a click of a button you can turn everything on and off through your house. So we've covered our custom themes, our custom dashboards. Now finally, let's run through how to set up your custom home automation. Head over to settings. We want to click on automations and scenes. Click on create automation, create a new one. Now you have triggers, conditions, and actions. What triggers the event? What are the conditions that need to be met? And what do you want to do? So I'm gonna add a new trigger. You've got a range of different things you can choose from. I'm gonna make it easy and simply go with time. We're gonna go with at one o'clock in the morning. I want to, I want to do something with a device. So I'm gonna click on device. Now you can choose any internet connected device that you have. So we've got our lights, for example, that I've already set up, but I'm gonna select TV. And what do I wanna do with my TV? I want to turn it off, hit save. Turn TV off, so give it a, a name and a description. Now, if I fall asleep watching TV, it will automatically turn my TVs off at nighttime at one o'clock in the morning. Once you've set up your automation, you will see it appear in the list and it will actually tell you when it's last triggered. What's really handy is you can click this drop down icon here and click run. And now it says last triggered one second ago. This is really handy because it allows you to test your home automations without having to wait till one o'clock in the morning for it to execute. So that was my home assistant setup. That's how I did my custom theme, dashboard and home automations. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know down in the comments down below if you would like me to build out that commute dashboard a bit more and run you through it. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.